Okay, everybody, I hope you're all having a good Saturday. We're fixing to install some of the outlets and inlets that's going to be mounted on the exterior of the trailer today. In fact, we've already got a hole cut out for one, which would be the city water inlet and freshwater inlet, combination city water and freshwater inlet. And we've already got the hole cut out for it and everything, but I wanted to show you how we're doing this. and. Uh, when it comes to things being lined up around the trailer, I'm really picky about making sure everything is symmetrical and even and all that stuff. So let me show you how I started out with this. Here's the, uh, this is the exterior shower that's going to be mounted on the driver's side of the trailer, just below where the sink will be eventually on the inside. And if you'll notice, of course, obviously, You've got your inside part that slips through the wall here, and then you've got the exterior flange that will be on the outside of the trailer. Now I wanted to make sure that I had everything lined up perfect all the way around the trailer. If you remember, which I'll show you here in a moment, we have diamond plate 24 inches up all the way around the exterior of the trailer. And I want everything to be mounted where it's an even line all the way around just a little bit below the upper lip of the diamond plate all around the trailer. To help me arrive at that, I cut two patterns for each apparatus that I'm mounting on the exterior. This board right here that you see, this one here, matches the exterior dimensions of the flange that's all the way around on this unit. This board right here matches the dimensions of the part that actually slips through the wall of the trailer towards the inside of the trailer. So this is the same size as this, and this board here is the same size as the flange all the way around. After I cut them, then I found center on both of them and drilled a quarter inch hole through both of them in the center of the board. You can see where the X is right there, where I marked center, and drilled a quarter inch hole through. Then, in order to get them lined up, let's walk out here to the trailer. And I'll... You I'll need, said you wouldn't film me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to need you to Move hold along. something here Move in a minute. Well, just a minute, I forgot. There's nothing to see there, here. There's nothing to see there? There's nothing to you see You look here. fine, you look fine. She mowed the yard, everybody, this morning. Everything's fine. She mowed the yard. So no, she's not going to be wearing makeup and have her hair just so-so just for that. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, now if you'll notice here, let me point around over here. You notice I've already got the, uh, the exterior uh, city water and fresh water inlet mounted. Well, it's laying in place. We don't actually have it screwed down yet. And we use the same principle with the same size patterns one that fit the larger flange and the other one that was the size of the part that actually slides through the wall. And, yeah, if you hold that, please. So anyway, you can see the marks, maybe. I can't really see them very well because of the glare of the sun. I hope you can see better than I can right now. But what we did, and you'll notice that I've already got a, I can't take that away just for a second. I've already got a quarter inch hole drilled through that because I already did that. But in order to make sure that everything is lined up properly, took a 3 8 thick board, laid it just underneath that lip there, pressed it up, and then pressed that into place underneath it, and then I drilled a quarter inch hole through, all the way through the trailer, right there. Then all we had to do, in order to make sure we got the proper size hole for the part that actually slides through, we stuck a quarter inch bolt, uh, you're such a wonderful assistant, through that, and then we stuck it through the hole there, lined it up by eyeball, and then marked it with a magic marker all the way around. And that's how we determined exactly where to cut our hole. Real simple, just took some scrap boards and then made the, uh, made the patterns. Then what we did, after we got everything marked on this one here, and I'm gonna do the same thing here, I took my multi-tool, my uh, $40 Harbor Freight multi-tool. And this is a metal cutting blade. This, this half moon blade is a metal cutting blade at Harbor Freight, they're like eight, nine dollars. For this one and first we cut through the metal first and we got two layers of metal here we've got the aluminum diamond plate and then of course we have the uh, aluminum exterior skin on the trailer 
and we cut through both of them and if you recall in earlier videos you may want to go back and look and check that out we installed backing plates in between the studs the same thickness of the studs on the inside so there's solid wood behind that all the way there's solid wood except for of course the layers of insulation that are in there as well so there is a layer of insulation there but the there is a one inch thick solid wood piece directly behind this wall right here and after we get this hole cut out then we'll have some really good meat to run screws into to hold these things firmly in place so anyway that's how we determine that and we're going to use the same principle all the way around uh, on everything that we install and when we get done with everything we'll show you but I'm going to go ahead and cut this out now and then we'll come back after we cut it out you don't need to see me cutting it it's pretty simple and actually the multi-tool works great for cutting the metal first and then you come back with what I did anyway I came back with my big reciprocating saw here and first had to drill a half inch hole up in one corner actually two corners opposite of each other uh, through the wood and then uh, use this to go ahead and cut through the wood all the way through and it made short work of it it really made short work of it it worked really really well for that so that's the principle that we're using all the way around let me get this cut and then we'll come back and show you show you what the end result was we'll be back here in just a little bit thanks okay I have both of these installed now they're both screwed down and everything I used butyl tape when I screwed them into place there's butyl tape wrapped around them um, actually this one here for some reason did not come with a gasket so I was going to use butyl tape on it anyway and if you look closely you can still see the the butyl tape oozing around the edges and I will be trimming that off around there and then running some uh, black colored caulk around that to, to give that a finished look if you look closely here you can see just a little bit of remnants of the butyl tape around that one and what I did there after we got them screwed into place I took a razor knife and simply trimmed uh, all around the edge held it up against the edge of the uh, unit there and and then pulled the butyl tape away and that's pretty sticky stuff it took a little bit of effort but uh, we got it done now I'll go ahead and open these here and you can see the screws there now the screws that came with it <clears throat> they were like little number eights and they weren't very long and so I went down and got some uh, number 10s uh, inch and a half long because remember I have that much uh, meat behind that there so I wanted to make sure that the screws you know bit really good so you can see how that one is screwed into place there and this one is screwed into place here now let's step inside here and I'll show you when you're running that uh, reciprocating saw it, uh, it's kind of hard to keep it uh, you know perfectly plumb to everything I was able to follow the lines on the outside with no problem but you can see on the inside it came out just a little ragged so what I intend to do here even though the cabinet will be setting over these and these will not be visible I still would rather have it looking more finished in here so I do intend on framing around those with some one bias just to give it a more finished look on that so that's what we will be doing a little bit down the road probably after we get the hoses hooked up and everything I'll go ahead and have all the pieces cut and ready to go and then we'll when we get all the connections made then I'll go ahead and do the framework around it now let's step out here and good morning dear <laughs> this is Sunday by the way folks she has makeup on now and hers hair done a little bit better so maybe uh, maybe she won't be too upset about me filming her for a little bit but she's gonna help me again today well she's gonna boss me around that's what she's gonna do yeah that's what I do that, uh, yeah that's what you do that's I'm right boss. that's your job you are the boss we all know that we're coming up on 47 years of marriage and there's a reason why we've made it this far and I'm it all boss. it all has to do with me though <laughs> she is the boss and I realize she's the boss and that and we move on that <laughs> yeah anyway let's walk around to the front of the trailer and we'll show you the 50 amp power inlet got it mounted right up here 
there it is mounted and it was real simple I made the pattern just like I told you about the other items how I made patterns but on this one I only had to make the one piece just to fit the the exterior dimensions of the power inlet because what you do to install this power inlet you drill a two and a half inch hole so once I laid my pattern up there and marked it the way I showed you how we did that by using a 3 8 uh, piece of board for a shim to get the proper distance down from the upper edge of the uh, of the diamond plate then all I had to do was drill the quarter inch hole through and then come back with my two and a half inch hole saw and finish drilling the hole all the way through and then we went ahead and mounted it. Now I still have it just temporarily mounted in place I ran a couple of screws in it for right now. Let me get down here and see if you can see that but I only ran two screws in it right now and those screws will be coming out and we'll be going with number 10's there. I'm using number 8's right there right now but we'll go back with number 10's and the reason why I just temporarily mounted it in place is because in order to hook the the service wire to it on the inside of the trailer I'll need to have it out because I can't get to where the terminals are because of the uh, almost two inches thick of wall that we ended up with now because we went with two layers of insulation and so on so I'll have to be able to take it back out hook the wiring up to it and then slide it back into the hole and then we will anchor it properly and I'll use beetle tape on it as well when I do that so it'll all be sealed real good now another reason why I use the butyl tape is because we are going over this diamond plate and the diamond plate itself would with its little nubbies that it has sticking up to make the design on it it does I do concern myself I'm concerned a little bit with uh, with it sealing properly because it's not a completely flat surface so so that is an issue that uh, I think the butyl tape can handle there uh, so let's go over here now what we're going to do next, right in this area here, this is the side door of course, right in this area right here, we'll be mounting three separate items here. One will be an exterior 120 volt receptacle. Another will be a ZAMP exterior plug for when we add a suitcase solar panels uh, to the system later. And another one will be the TV antenna line coming in. We intend on getting a new um, a new TV antenna that uh, let's see King Jack has come out with that mounts on its own tripod stand outside the trailer. I think it's called the OmniGo is what we're going to go with and we'll be able to set it up outside of the trailer and then run a cable right here. And of course the cable inside will be hardwired and go straight to the to the television and everything so that's the way we're going to do that the neat thing about this OmniGo and we'll talk about that more when we get that later and they're about a hundred bucks it also comes with a magnetic base as well so you don't have to set it on their little tripod stand that it comes with if you want you can set it on top of your trailer if you have a metal roof and it will stick to the metal roof with its magnetic base and it's omnidirectional you don't have to worry about figuring out uh, where your strongest signal is and all that and all the reviews that we've read so far uh, are very positive uh, the people that have used it so far are very uh, are very impressed with uh, what it's able to do so that's the way we're going to go because I really don't want to drill any holes in my roof and that's another reason why we're going to go with the suitcase solar system it's not like we're going to be totally off grid and want to be able to run all the power you know everything off of solar it's just that we want to have that ability to uh, top off our batteries a little bit when we're set in two weeks at a particular campground that we'll be traveling. Now let's go in here and I'll show you these items right quick that we're fixing to install today. By the way, my wife ran and hid around the corner so I wouldn't show her on camera again. <laughs> this is the box we're going to uh, attempt to mount to the outside and I've got to be very precise when I cut that hole because I don't have a whole lot of room there to leave enough meat beside aside to get screws to go in so that is going to be a little on the tricky side we ordered this cover from uh, Amazon and it has a good gasket but again I'm probably going to back it up with butyl tape as well and it is made for let me see if I can get it open here 
it is made for a GFCI outlet, of course, is what you want to use there. And here's our 20 amp GFCI, GFCI outlet that we will be installing. But mainly today, we're going to work on getting this box fitted in, in, uh, in that area over there. Another thing that we will be installing today, because we can, is the ZAMP exterior plug. So we'd be able to plug in a suitcase solar panel kit to this and be very simple. And it will simply come straight in and go straight to the batteries, which will also be on that same side of the trailer, not too far from, from the side door. So, of course, I'll have to, you know, tie heavier wire onto this. I'm going to leave this length of wire on here that's here now, and I, that looks to be number 12. I didn't really look that close, but we'll probably just let the pigtail come in as far as it needs to in order to clear the thickness of the wall, and then I will probably tie on to that with a much heavier wire that will go from there to the, to the batteries. So we'll see how that works out. Now, I haven't really double-checked this to be sure, but it appears that what plugs in here is a standard... Uh, quick disconnect, uh, 12 volt uh, pigtail plug that you can get at almost any auto parts store. Uh, O'Reilly's carries them, I've used them before for other things. But that's what it looks like. It looks like a regular uh, 12 volt pigtail that you can buy at O'Reilly's for like four or five bucks or something like that. So I will be experimenting with that. But we'll go ahead and get the hole drilled for that and that'll be simple. You know, just drill a hole big enough for this to fit through. And then, of course, uh, screw it in, and I will probably run uh, butyl tape around the edges of that, too, and do the same thing that I did on the other items, mainly because it's going to be going through the, uh, going through the diamond plate. This is the TV connection, exterior TV connection, that we'll be mounting there. Probably won't do it today, and the main reason why, keep in mind, is we've got uh, a two inch thick wall that we've got to go through and there's no way that uh, we'll be able to reach through that hole and screw a TV cable onto that on the inside of the trailer so I really don't want to drill this hole right now and then have that hole open I may go ahead and drill it anyway just experiment with it and then maybe tape over it or something until we actually install this permanently but I won't be ready to install that permanently until I get uh, more things built on the inside, uh, know exactly where the TV is going to be going, know exactly how much interior cable I need to get over to the TV, so on and so forth. So we may drill the hole today and cover it up or run a bolt through it or whatever, we'll see. Or we may not. We'll just see what happens. But this little item is what, uh, is what the uh, TV will plug into. I don't have these out to show you, but we're also going to be working on installing two motion sensor lights today, which, here again, are you going to get them right quick? Or get one of them? Or is that, oh, they're right here. Well, we can't see them, they're in the package. Aha! <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Now, these are the motion sensor exterior lights that we're going to be mounting, and they're 12 volt, and we'll mount them above each door. Now remember we have an RV door at the back and we have an RV door at the side. And here again, knowing that we were going to be doing this, I put backing plates above the doors one inch thick so I would have meat to screw into on this. Now these will be pretty simple as well because you, know, you can't really see it here, but there's just four screw holes and they're fairly grouped together in the center and really all I got to do is drill a hole large enough for the wire to come through and then uh, then mount these through the four screw holes that are here and that's about it on that so it doesn't look like it's going to be that difficult to do so this is what we're working on uh, today give us a couple minutes we'll be back in a little bit and we'll um, we'll show you what we're doing and uh, how we arrived at what we did anyway see you in a little bit bye Okay, everybody, here are the other three uh, inlets mounted on the other side of the trailer. We had to mount these lower than the other ones on the other side because we started checking about uh, where the bed frame is going to be and the, where these are mounted here. The wires that come through on the other side, 
will come through just below the top of the bed frame that'll be just beyond this wall over here so we ended up having to mount them lower in order to make everything work because I didn't want the wires to come up above that and then have to figure out a way to hide them before they go down below the bed frame so where they're sitting right there all the wires that come out of the back will come out just a tad below the top of the bed frame that will be just on the opposite side of the wall right there or part of the bed frame anyway I should say the first one of course this one is the exterior outlet and it took us a long time to get this one and, it, and all of these are just temporarily mounted I need to say that right quick but they're just temporarily mounted right now because I got to take them back out in order to hook everything up and then mount them permanently once uh, once I get all the wires hooked up on the back of them but uh, this one here we ran into a little bit of trouble uh, the the cover that we ordered from Amazon of course is uh, designed for a GFCI type outlet well when I started to mount a GFCI type outlet into the metal box that I'm using for this the GFC outlet was extra wide and it would have meant that the terminals the power terminals on the outlet itself would have been touching the side of the metal box so what I ended up doing is going back to uh, Lowe's and I got another plug that is not GFCI but it fits the the rectangular opening of this cover what I will do in order to make sure it's GFCI protected I will mount another GFCI outlet out GFCI outlet on the interior of the trailer that will be on the same circuit as this and that way uh, it'll be protected by a GFCI from the inside what I've got to find out for sure is if the GFCI needs to be at the very end of the circuit or at the beginning of the circuit so once I determine that that will determine how I wire this to make sure that it's protected by a GFCI, out, a GFCI outlet of course the next one here is the TV cable inlet and again it's just temporarily mounted right now and it was pretty simple and straightforward it uh, all it required there was just drilling a, a hole big enough for the TV coax cable to run through the hole and then uh, we temporarily screwed it in place it will not have those gold screws when I'm done those are number eights and here again I'm gonna go back with number tens and here again just like I did on the other side there is a one inch thick wood backing plate behind all this so I have plenty of meat to screw into which was all part of the plan to begin with and of course this one over here is the Zamp inlet the Zamp power inlet for when we eventually go with uh, some solar and we'll be able to plug in a suitcase solar kit right to that and of course that will go right to the batteries and the batteries will be mounted real close to this on the other side just underneath the uh, corner of the bed frame so uh, that's going to work out real well that it's going to be real close to where the batteries are which is purely accidental to be honest with you I didn't really plan that but it came out that way so that's awesome so anyway that's what we have there on that we spent so much time getting the uh, exterior power outlet fitted and finding the proper stuff to do it with today that we didn't have enough time to work on the on the motion sensor lights that will be going above the doors so we'll cover that in another video down the road how we did that but anyway this is where we're at right now let me step just inside here and I'll show you where the wires are coming through can you see them there you go right there the first one of course is where uh, the electrical box comes through where the GFC where the exterior outlet is and here again the the bed frame is going to land let me see if I can, you can see my hand bed frame will land roughly right in here uh, and then go across here so it'll, these are setting just below the bed frame and remember the batteries are going to be right in this area right in here real close to where the the Zamp the Zamp uh, power feed is setting so it's actually going to work out pretty good and it was purely accidental I, I hate to admit that I didn't plan this but it worked out what I did have to remember was uh, the height of the bed frame in order to make sure everything came out okay we originally planned on the bed frame or the benches to be roughly 12 inches tall but we ended up deciding to go taller with them 
just so we have enough room for the batteries to fit uh, underneath the wires as well what little bit of wires will be close to the batteries themselves so anyway and we'll cover all that in a later video of course when we start building the frame we're going to order the water tank the fresh water tank Monday which would be tomorrow and as soon as it comes in then we'll start uh, laying out how the benches are going to be and everything for the bed frame and and figure out what I need to do as far as bracing is concerned to secure the water tank to the floor and still allow enough room for the pump which we already have we bought a SureFlow 12 volt pump and it's here now so slowly we're gathering stuff together uh, we'll also be here in the next few days be we'll finish of course mounting the the motion sensor lights above the doors and which will be you know up here of course <laughs> is one of them and and then of course we're going to be mounting uh, our our faucets inside the shower get all of the the fixtures you know mounted as much as we can so when we start running some plumbing we'll actually have something to hook up to so that's the next step down the line is to get that stuff done so basically the bed frame and the plumbing is the next thing on the list and then we'll be starting on the cabinets at the back and we've decided to purchase um, some of our cabinets already pre-made and we found a local supplier actually they're all over the country uh, wholesale surplus warehouse I believe is the name of the company and they're all over the country and they didn't realize they had so many stores everywhere but they're all over Alabama Louisiana all out through the southeast part of the country for sure and they had some pretty reasonable prices on some cabinets that we can make work in here and so we're gonna go that route it'll be faster and easier and all that good stuff so you know we're getting excited we're ready to get this thing done we're ready to move on down the road and start uh, going out in it and learning the ropes and figuring everything out how we want to make everything work so anyway a recap of what we did today we got those inlets and outlets installed there we got the 50 amp the 50 amp power inlet mounted here and then of course we got the water inlet and the outside shower unit mounted here so this is what we've got done so far I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you could uh, see some ways to do some of this stuff yourself I hope we were helpful uh, I'm working on it here <laughs> um, I sometimes I stammer and stutter because I'm thinking about what I want to say next and let me remind everybody folks that I don't have anything script everything is on the fly I speak as I'm talk you know I just simply think a little bit about what I'm gonna say and then I just start filming and talking so sometimes I may use uh and ah uh a lot and I try not to do that and I know it irritates a few people but I really really work hard at trying to watch that and I hope I'm getting better than I was originally as time goes on we'll get better at uh, shooting videos we'll get better at uh, how we talk we'll get better at how we explain things this is a learning experience for us as well as as a lot of other folks as well so anyway bear with us all we're trying to do is be hopeful to show you what we're doing and if you can use some of this stuff that is fantastic and that's that's what we're after if you can use some of this stuff that is fantastic anyway I'm gonna sign off for now and Deb ran into the house so I can't uh, I can't uh, put her on camera anymore but anyway uh, this is where we are at the point at this point right now Y'all take care. We'll be doing something else uh, during the week and the end of next week, and we'll film it and document it as well and share it with y'all. We'll see you again in, not, in the not-the-too-far-distant future. So y'all take care. This is Bill with iRide Tiny House Adventures saying bye-bye for now. Thank you.